Does it always look like Jesus is ruling all things for our good and for our eternal reality in heaven? Of course not. Whether you're in certain seasons in life like fall and winter or summer or spring or in your, if you're in other seasons in life like trial or suffering, sickness or grief, even when you look at the things that are going on in this world, it can be very hard to see and to believe that Jesus is king. That Jesus Christ is king over all, ruling all things for our good. But beyond what we can see, and far transcendent above what we perceive, Jesus is most certainly the King of kings and Lord of lords. And so on this Sunday, we set aside this opportunity, along with so many other Christians, to celebrate this reality. That far beyond what we can see with our naked eyes, God has given us a heart of faith to behold his precious truths. That the God of promise is most certainly in control of all things. And the same Savior who died and rose to conquer death and now sits on the highest throne above all things, including rulers and powers, rulers, powers and authorities of this world, certainly is ruling all things for our good here and now. And so throughout all of the seasons of what we call the church year, we take time to celebrate that Jesus is most certainly the king, the king who came to us in Advent, just as he promised, and then ultimately at Christmas fulfilled in the flesh. And then he revealed himself in ministry in the season of Epiphany. And then at the time of Lent, he, with every single step, was approaching the cross until he breathed his last and finished the payment for all only to take it up again in Easter when he rose on the third day. And then now through the Spirit, just as he promised, he works through the word in his church in order to communicate these precious truths until we look forward to his coming again. So through every season of the church year, just as through every season of every year and every season of life, our Savior is most certainly in control for our good. King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, by your victory, you have broken the power of the evil one. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we look with hope to the day when every creature in heaven and on earth will acclaim you King of kings and Lord of lords to your unending praise and glory. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Responsive verses from Revelation chapter 1. Grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us, and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. The portion of God's word that we would meditate upon today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is God's word. When the Apostle Paul is writing these words, he's not writing these words in a joyful situation. It's not like he's basking in the sun on the Mediterranean coast, enjoying a beverage and some appetizers on the side. It's not as though he is gathered around family and loved ones galore who are enabling him to experience the nostalgia of his life, of his experience, of his upbringing. It's not as if he just got done with a Thanksgiving meal and he's ready to kick his feet up and to look forward to some Christmas decorations. It's not anything like that at all. When the Apostle Paul writes this letter to the Philippians, he writes this letter in prison. He's able to move around. It's not like he's in shackles and chains. That other imprisonment would come again in Rome. But this is his first Roman imprisonment. And still he's not able to do everything that he otherwise would. And what's the reason? 
for being a servant of God and for sharing the gospel of our Lord and Savior, the King of all, Jesus Christ. What's the occasion? He's writing these words to the Philippians because they have expressed such a concern for him and given him reason to have such thanksgiving because they cared for him and they supported him even when almost nobody else would. They sent a, a co-worker, a partner in the gospel to support him and to help him. And so the Apostle Paul has much reason to find joy. And when he finds joy, he is not finding joy in his circumstances. He's not looking at where he is and how bad his circumstance is. He's not looking at the people around him who've been cruel to him. He's not looking at the rulers and the powers and the authorities in this life and saying, oh man, everything's come to ruin. This world is going to, to, to ruins. He's, he's not complaining about any of those things. Instead, he says, rejoice in the Lord. Always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. And you might think that up to that point, he has given us a tall order. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice just to pound it in your head in case you weren't paying attention to God's commands. It's an imperative. Rejoice. But rejoicing is pretty hard when we look at what's going on in the world. And regardless of your political persuasion, nothing is perfect and no politician will ever prevail to give us the reality that we ultimately want. We look at the community around us and we see things like crime and homelessness and poverty and hunger. We see the amount of sickness that is wreaking havoc on so many families and how terrible and even terminal diseases arise so easily. And what are we to do in the face of all of that? Then, then we look not only on the outside, but we look at the inside and we, we Think to ourselves of all of the inadequacies that we ourselves possess, the inadequacies and weaknesses that others can perceive, but the many more that we keep hidden. We can easily think of all of the challenges that we face in life, whether it's the fear over our finances, how we're going to get through this holiday season, and what's coming in this year with interest rates and money and the economy, and there's so many things to be concerned about financially. And then physically, with one medical visit after the other, we look at our children who might have some challenges. We wish that we could take them on ourselves, but we can't. It, then we also consider the other challenges that we face, whether it's relational challenges with friends or coworkers or with our family. And in many cases, we can't choose those people that we find ourselves in close circles with. And so what do we do? when we're worried about the next conversation or we're concerned about uh, what other people are going to do with our reputation at, at the job place or otherwise. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Is it easy to be gentle? Let your gentleness be evident to all to, in, in situations that might call for us to be more powerful and assertive, for us to be more pointed and frank, for us to have a gentleness about us. And then he says, don't be anxious about anything. About anything? When you think about all the things that we have to worry about, things that I've already mentioned, and whatever it is that is going on in your own heart and mind, the anxieties that creep in, whether it's over something, like relationships or concerns or the, this, the things that are going on in the, in the economy, etc., or even just general anxiety that wells up almost for no reason at all and you can't control it. Don't be anxious about anything. But right there, the, in the middle of those imperatives, as God often does by the power of his spirit, he doesn't just give us commands with high expectations and that's it. No, he gives us commands with a promise of the Lord's presence. I'll say that again. The Lord never expects from us what he doesn't give to us. Instead, he gives commands with the power of his promise and his presence. Right there in the middle. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. 
You see, with the Lord being near, that, that gives you in the ability to find the joy that the Apostle Paul had. He, he says, rejoice, not just have a smile on your face and not just have some glee in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord. It is only in the Lord that we find this joy that transcends all of our circumstances and even our own personal understanding. It is only in the Lord and his promises that we have a joy that truly gets to the bottom of the deepest desires and longings and needs of our heart. Think about it. Behind every weakness and anxiety, behind every fear and worry, behind every doubt and every frustration and struggle in this life is the cause of all of those things. And it is our sin. It is the fact that we cannot perfectly serve God and know that we will be with him on account of who we are. And that is why we need a joy that is outside of us to come inside of us to give us a reality that would otherwise not belong to us. And that joy can only be given to us through our Savior Jesus. It is Jesus who for the joy set before him endured everything, even the cross, scorning its shame and by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, our Savior conquered, defeated, crushed, and squelched every threat and fiery detriment that looms large over us. With his rising from the grave, it was as if God wiped away the cloudy gloom of night over us, unveiling to us the brightness of the eternal dawn of the everlasting day of resurrection. And because he's given, him, given that to you, by the word of his promise, he has never failed and he is not about to start today. If Jesus demonstrated that he is most certainly the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, then we certainly have a joy that is beyond our circumstances because this world cannot and will not, by faith we cannot let it, dictate the joy that God has given us in our heart, in our mind, and in our soul. No, by faith he has given us the eternal reality that transcends all understanding and all of the trivial aspects of this life. And that enables us to have a joy and a thanksgiving as we present our requests to God. A deep gratitude in our hearts for all that he has given us instead of a laundry list of complaints over the things that he hasn't given us. Talk about a true sense of thanksgiving, even maybe after this past Thursday. We can present our requests to God. We can continually go to the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, N not because we have to, but because we know we want to and we, we need to. There's nowhere else to turn in a world that is full of puppet rulers who pretend to be in power but will only disappoint us in the end. The one who crushed sin and who defeated death and who is more powerful than the depths of all evil themselves. Yes, the devil and all of his minions. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives us the true source of joy that can only be found in himself. And God gives you this promise. Not just some day in the future, but he gives you this promise right now. The Lord is near. The Lord is near in his word of promise, which continually feeds and nourishes us. The Lord is near in this baptismal life that we live as we Remember that we have been drowned. Our sinful nature has been drowned and we have been raised with Christ to have this new life by the power of the Spirit, buried in his death and raised in his resurrection all by the power of our baptism. That he feeds and nourishes us through the Lord's Supper, a meal unlike any other, where the forgiveness that is connected to the body and blood of Christ is miraculously given to us so that we can inwardly digest this and yes, by faith, receive it for our good. The Lord is near in his word and sacraments. The Lord is near because it could be any day now when he comes. And when he comes, that is not something to be afraid of for the Savior who bears the wounds of his death for us will also reveal those wounds to us when he takes us to be home with him. The Lord is near. And so, and so with every single day, and no matter the season in life, we can continually behold our Savior's word of promise and approach them with this type of reality. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, the peace that can only come from him, the peace that is found in him alone, 
transcends all that we could ever understand just with our feeble, pint-sized brain. It will guard your heart. Your heart from the doubts and the worries and the anxieties and your mind from all of those other skeptical thoughts about God, it will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. And since Jesus is ruler of all, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he is the one who will guard your heart and your mind, and the true joy and the true peace that you could ever want is found in him, and, God is, and since also God has never broken his word of promise to you, then that means that this season, yeah, sure, the, this holiday season, this Christmas season, but the, also this season, yeah, sure, as we approach Advent and, and Christmas and then Epiphany, this season, this season of life, of, of trial and struggle, of joys, and maybe even some bleak moments as well, this season, no matter where you find yourself in life in this world, is underneath the one who is king of all and will guard your hearts and minds. And the one who promised is faithful, and he is not about to break a single promise for you either. God bless you all. Amen. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for being with us today and for tuning into this online service. This is but an abbreviated form of what we provide every Sunday at both of our locations in Western North Carolina, both in Asheville and in Hendersonville, every Sunday at 930. Pastor Zell, myself, Pastor Caleb Kerbis, and also Vicar Christie. We look forward to being able to share God's word with everyone here at Living Savior at both of our locations and with the surrounding communities as we're given the opportunity. And so if there's any way that we could share God's word with you, pray for you or pray with you or encourage you in any way, please do reach out to us. It's a busy and eventful time of the year and we would love for this time of the year to also have God's word in your life. And so if you, we can do that, please reach out to us and learn more about us at our website, lsavior.org. God bless and keep you this day, this season, and always under Christ our King. Take care.